fella. Well, right. I think he's going to be fine, and that's the first time a jet has hit a Patriot in, in years. So, right? I mean, I mean good for them. Yeah, everybody's laughing because everybody's so jealous how good the Patriots are. They're like, yeah, look, we, you know what? They just can't get it done on the field. All you can do is beat the mascot. Yeah. That Patriot got to hold the up. Time now for stories to start your morning. Start with some bad news for the Pacers. Victor Oladipo suffered a serious injury to his right knee last night. He'll have an MRI today, but the Pacers fear they've lost Oladipo for the year. Nick, how devastating is this? Well, listen, this is a team that, against a lot of odds, has stayed in the top four of the East all year long, and that now is over in a matter of weeks. He is, even though his statistical production hasn't been what it was last year, he has been the heart and soul of that team and the best player on that team. The only silver lining for him is he already signed a long-term extension, so he will have plenty of time to get healthy on company time, if you will, but this stinks. And I would watch the reports coming out. I believe there could be a couple different injuries here. You saw the training staff when they came out, immediately they begin to cover his leg up. Mm -hmm. That's not a torn ACL or MCL. There's something else going on there. So we wish him well, speedy recovery. Good story, too, with them losing Paul George, him being the face of that franchise. All right, to the NFL now, Larry Fitzgerald has agreed to a one-year deal to return to the Cardinals for a 16th season. Fitz ranks second in the NFL history in receiving yards, third in receptions, and tied for sixth in receiving touchdowns. See you excited to see him back out there again next year? Um, I can't say I'm as excited as other NFL fans are. I know the NFL is because he's one of the true, true great men that we have. Arizona and their ownership, they got a young team there not winning a lot. But for myself, though, I, 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 I get concerned. All right, if he wants to play football, him and I have had this conversation. He's still enjoying it. So I'm happy for him that he's in, enjoying it. The, and concerned because of just long-term health and things like that. He is, he's got, listen, he, you mentioned that he's second in yards. The guy, it's not like he can get to first. It, Jerry's ahead of him by 6,000. So he's doing it and he's got, he's made more money than any receiver ever by a wide margin. He's doing it because he wants to keep playing, and I'm sure Josh Rosen's happy that they've got Larry Fitzgerald another that year. Yeah, that name right there is the reason yeah. why I'm not happy. Consummate professional, I will say, I will say this. Um, the league's a better place when Larry Fitzgerald's in it. One of the best people in football. Yeah. Finally, while the Super Bowl is pretty evenly matched, that according to Vegas and all, the quarterback matchup seems slightly one-sided. I did say slightly. Jared Goff heading to his first ever Super Bowl. Tom Brady practically invented the Super Bowl. Goff, who floundered in year one under Jeff Fisher, has prospered in years two and three under Sean McVay. And after the win on Sunday, offensive tackle Andrew Whitworth heaped praise on the young quarterback. You know what? He's just a special kid. I've said it since you know we really came to training camp, and uh, really since the day I met him, uh, I've realized that he's a special kid. And uh, you know what? I told my wife before this playoff started. This is the first year that I really didn't. It really wasn't about me. I really, honestly, felt like uh, I was more nervous for this playoffs because I believe in Jared Goff, and I believe that he deserves to win. And uh, I just want to be right about that, and that's what it means the most to me. And, and I can't be more proud of him. All right, Stink, when you look at what Jared Goff has lined ahead of him for this uh, big game, how, how much, uh, you know, is he going to have to contend with with this Patriots defense? Well, I mean, they'll have a, they'll, they'll certainly have a plan like they have with Patrick Mahomes. They're going to take away some of your weapons. There's no question about that. I was so impressed with Jared Goff and his ability to manage that game early in that crowd noise. There's nothing like playing in New Orleans when the New Orleans Saints are good. Then you couple that with the playoffs. It is a miserable place to try try to play offensive football and you saw that early in the game and to weather that storm to go through that and I, I was talking to um, uh, Whitworth to Whitworth and just about Jared Goff in general and there was a Thursday night game where Whitworth had given up a sack but it was Jared Goff who essentially drifted in the pocket didn't climb the pocket gave up the sack and you know it went on, it went on Whitworth, Whitworth and, and, yeah. yeah. And so Whitworth goes the next morning. He called me like six times to apologize. He felt so bad. He's text messaging, and, and finally Whitworth is like, "Hey kid, it's fine. Quit <laughs> calling me. Like I'm gonna be like I'm all right. I'm a big boy. But like he has got that team. He is the unquestioned leader mm -hmm. of that team. He has got their. He's earned their respect by the way he handles his business and. I'm telling you what, his ability and what they did as an offense 
in New Orleans mm -hmm. when they were struggling and they found a way to come back in overtime and put that drive together to get uh, you know to get the the field goal it just is it, amazing he's he's played exceptionally well you mentioned in overtime the the to me the most underrated and under discussed part of this football weekend was the drive the Rams executed after the Saints took the lead at the mm -hmm. tail end of regulation everyone focused on the missed call everyone focused on the other things that went around it but you are inside the two minute warning you have one timeout you're down three with the trip to the Super Bowl on the line and Jared Goff made some throws now and I have been more skeptical of him than most I thought he was made some enormous plays late in the game to set up the 48-yard Greg Zerline field goal, which is the only reason we got to overtime in that game. Mm -hmm. The 57-yarder was almost set up by the Drew Brees pick and then just, I think, two positive plays. But what he was able to do, and I think most people watching that game thought, when you see Jared Goff running to the far side of the field talking to the receiver, when you see their inability to communicate, when you see the bad luck of one of his first passes of the game goes off Todd Gurley's hands and right. now all of a sudden the Saints have the ball again, that this was about to be a snowball rolling downhill, his ability to overcome that I think should prepare him well for the Patriots defense. But as we've seen from the Pats and saw in the AFC Championship game, Belichick will have something ready for him that he has not seen yet this season and probably hasn't seen in his career. There's two keys to Jared Goff going against this New England defense. Number one is the question, will he wake up before Patty Mahomes did? Patty Mahomes didn't wake up till halftime. Patty Mahomes didn't realize what they were trying to do with Tyreek Hill, the single coverage on Kelsey early in the game and couldn't take advantage of it. And will Jared Goff take the challenge of running the football with his legs? If you want to hurt the New England defense with their principles and everything, that's what I know they are not preparing for. And there's going to be three or four plays earlier in the game. It's not going to be clean. He can run and utilize his legs and I think that would hurt and make New England make some huge adjustments because that's not something stink mm. that that type of defense with him the type of quarterback that they won't account for and he's a better athlete than people give him credit for. If you look at this Patriots team you'd say well they are where they are this year because of Tom Brady so some might disagree but if you look at the Rams team would they be in this position without Jared Goff in the season he had? Oh absolutely not I mean he's been he's been incredible and you know I mean it's everybody it's Todd Gurley, it's Jared Goff, and, and it's Sean McVay calling plays. And I, I will tell you this, if they try to take out, like, Cooks, for instance, they're still going to get Cooks the ball. Unlike Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs decided not to get Tyreek Hill the ball, not to hand it to him on a jet sweep, not to fake a jet sweep and throw a screen, not to, like, that, that's inexcusable. But that won't happen under Sean McVay's watch. If you're trying to take out and double team, mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to double team Cooks, man, they're going to line up in a stack and a bunch, and they're going to run a shallow get cross with him. The they will, will so find a way to let, let him make some plays. But Jared Goff has been exceptional, and they've done an exceptional, des, uh, 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 an exceptional job from a design standpoint of making sure that he throws so many five-step drops with without a hitch and throws it to the one intended target yeah. because they do a great job with design and a great job of him understanding that design. All right, let's turn to the Cowboys now. Yes, they did win.